Welcome to Maya, guys. This is the Maya interface. If you ever wanted to learn how 3D projects are made, like video games, commercial shots, movies, and many more kinds of amazing stuff in this 3D world, it all starts with 3D software. And Maya is one of them. Maya is one of the well-known industry standard software for animation and modeling. And in this video, I'm going to teach you the Maya interface and how it works. So how about it? Let's start exploring Maya. So I know. It may feel a little bit intimidating at first because it has a lot of buttons, a lot of menus, and a lot of stuff you can see on the interface. But actually, it's deceptively simple. So now I'm going to show you real quick the basic stuff that you need to know. First off, I just want to mention that all the shortcut keys and letters that I'm going to use are going to be mentioned right here. So pay attention very closely. So let's get started to explaining. These are all the menus, like in any usual software. Now we have the shortcuts as well, such as new file, open, save, undo, and redo. And all these shortcuts that I mentioned are going to be used in our workflow. And this area over here is called a shelf, which is very important to take note of because this is where we see our tools that we use in our projects. Also, it's pretty much for easy access as well. It makes selecting tools easy because if they're on the shelves, we don't need to navigate the menu to select each tool. So most tools are usually available in the shelves themselves. And right over here is another important area, which is the viewport window, which lets us connect with the 3D world, just like a video game. Now, the first thing you need to know about is how to move around with the viewport. In Maya, all you have to do is to press Alt and left mouse click, as this is the normal click to rotate the camera around just like this. Use Alt and middle mouse click to pan the camera up and down, right and left. And Alt and left mouse click is to zoom your camera. And you can also zoom with your little scroll wheel. These three mouse buttons will let us control the overall movement of the viewport. And down over here, you can see these three little arrows. These guys are also pretty important because they're going to tell us the coordinates of our 3D world. These three arrows represent the three axes, the X, Y, and Z axis. And on this right side, you can see the channel box, which has import and attribute editor. You can also switch between both by pressing control A, and this lets us import objects into the scene as well as modifying them. Over on the left side, you can see the outliner. And sometimes the outliner tab will be minimized here, so take note of that. The outliner will show every single object that's available within the scene. But for now, as we have nothing currently inside the scene, the outliners show nothing except for the default cameras and sets, which we need to work. And right down over here is the animation department, which has the timeline that is used to control the keyframes. And the time range is also right here. Now it's time for us to learn how we can add objects onto the scene and modify or manipulate them. It's actually pretty simple, as the, all you got to do is to click on the figures over here on the poly modeling shelves. Now let's click the sphere over here. Now the shortcut that we're going to use to select the sphere is Q. Pressing Q will activate the selection tool, which will allow us to select and deselect objects in our scene. Whenever you have something selected, you can now see that the channel box has some information. These are the transformation inputs for this object. It tells us where this object lives in the 3D world. Right now, it has zero transform, zero rotation, and default one scale. If we move the object, you can see the information in the channel box will also get modified. And now the question is, how do we move? The shortcut key to move any object is W. By clicking W, you will be able to see the manipulator arrows to move our object in the 3D space. Now, if you have a full keyboard, over on the right, you'll be able to see that you have a number pad. Press plus and minus to make size changes in the little arrows to make it either bigger or smaller. For me personally, I'd like to have them roughly at this size. These arrows represent the axis on which we can move the object. If we select the red arrow and move the object, you can see on the little channel box up there that the object is moving on the X axis. And now we'll be able to see that we're on eight units of the positive side effects or negative eight units on X. So the little red arrow is going to move our dimensions very, very nicely. The little green arrow is going to move us up and down 
and the little blue arrow is going to move us back and forth. Okay, so that's the first manipulation, which is the movement. The next manipulation tool is rotation. I'm going to use a cylinder for this, so I'm just going to click over here. The cylinder we get is under here, and the next button is, of course, the letter E. So if we press the letter E, you're going to see that now we get this nice little rings inside of our cylinder. These rings represent the axis that go across our object. So if you rotate the x-axis, this is the kind of rotation you're going to get. And if you rotate the y-axis, this is the kind of rotation you're going to get. And if you wanted to rotate the z-axis, this is what it's going to look like when you rotate it. Again, we have three rotation, which means that if you press right here in the middle and rotate, the object will rotate freely. However, we're going to get very extreme numbers over here, and this might get a little bit difficult. So let's not touch that right now. Finally, we have camera-based rotation, which is the light blue color on the outside. If we rotate this little point over here, you can see that the center is the point of rotation for the object. So for now, let's just stick to this, guys. Control Z, of course, to undo any sort of transformation. I'm going to use this little donut here because it shows the transformations a little bit better. And the final transformation that we can do to an object is the scale, which is the letter R. Now with R, instead of having little arrows, we can have these little cubes, and if you select any of these cubes, you're going to skew the object in any axis that we need. So you can skew one axis to access, one axis here, and you can even isolate this one axis and just scale it like this. This little square here in the center is actually pretty helpful because it helps you scale everything at the same time. Very cool, right? So guys, these are the three tools. W, which is movement, E, which is rotation, and R, which is the scale tool. And these are going to be the main tools that we use to modify our objects inside of mine. So now I'm going to give you a very simple, small exercise here. Just so that you'll get comfortable with the interface and with the creation and manipulation of shapes. We're going to make a very simple, blocky looking go-kart. So I'm going to start with the torus, which is the wheel. I'm going to hit rotation and I'm going to rotate this thing and I'm going to make it 90 degrees because I want this to be right here. I'm then going to move this up because I want this to be on top of the floor and I'm going to push it to the side. And then over here, that's going to be my first wheel. Then I'm going to hit control D and this object has become duplicated. And now I can select both of them with shift and press control D again and then move them back so that both wheels are exactly in the same place. And so just like that, very quickly and easily, we've made a very nice set of wheels to go with our little go-kart. So now moving on to the body of the go-kart, I'm going to start off with a cube. I'm gonna then make the cube bigger and move it back. So it's right just in the middle of the wheels. And then I'm gonna make it small, just like this. Now let's place it right over here and make it thinner so that it doesn't crash with any of the wheels. And there we go. Now then let's move on to a cylinder. I'm going to make the cylinder smaller than really, really tall. And then I'm gonna rotate the cylinder around 90 degrees. So that's right, flat on its surface. I'm then going to position this in the middle of the wheels, just like this. This will have to be perfect. So now I'm gonna press Control D and W. Then we're going to move this back and we're going to place it on this side. Now then let's grab the cube for instance. Control D, move it up, make it thinner, rotate this way and use this to make it look like the front side of the go-kart, just like this. Now let's do Control D and let's do it for the back seat right over there. Something just like this. And let's just scale it up and move it up. And there we go. Lastly, we need an engine, right? Otherwise, this thing is never going to go anywhere. So let's just add a cube to make sure that this looks like a basic engine. And let's put the engine back here, just like that. Now then, let's go make a steering wheel. I'm going to use another torus. Move this up, rotate, and position where it should be right about here is fine. 
and then I'm going to grab another cylinder and I'm going to place it over by the steering wheel so that it connects to that direction. And there we go. That was just a quick little exercise to get you comfortable with the My Interface, the camera movements, and the position of the elements. Of course, it's not a game-ready model or anything. It's just a quick little activity. It should take you about 5 to 10 minutes to get into a position just like this one. So, get your little go-kart going and keep on working. Make sure you feel comfortable in moving around Maya, utilize all of these movement tools, W, E, R, etc., and let's go on this Maya journey together. Have a great beginning, and thank you very much for watching.